Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part three of the expert walkthrough for Dark Souls. Here we are at the Undeadburg Bonfire, and today I am going to switch out the club for the Morning Star. The only reason I'm doing this is because I think the Morning Star looks better. I know for a fact that it hits harder, and it has that nice little bleed effect down there in the right corner. Now, our current attack with the club is 95. And if we equip the Morning Star, it turns into 88. I know we've taken a small reduction in damage, but the bleed effect will make up for it if I can trigger it. The Morning Star does have the same attack move, well, the same attack set as the club. The only difference is the strong attack. Instead of being a jump attack that clears distance, it turns into a very hard overswing that does damage to the head. Now, there's only one drawback of the Morning Star. The bleed effect, in order to trigger it, requires numerous successful hits, whether their shield is up or not. Meaning, we have to hit the enemy at least four or so times to get the bleed effect to trigger. These enemies, they all die in one or two hits, which is the problem. But, later on, we will be able to activate the bleed effect. And, trust me. That little 300 bleed may not sound like much on top of your weapon, but it'll make up for the damage that we lost from switching from the club. I'll show you guys how hard it hits. You see? Ow. I was able to break his guard after just two swings. And I believe it would have taken three or four with the club. Parry. That's what you get for poking me. Okay, this is the area that I did not show in the last video. This is the second secret area in the Undead Burg. You can roll through these crates, or you can hit them with your weapon to expose these stairs. Now when you walk down here, you want to proceed with caution, because there are two different doorways we can go through, but there's a set of shelves back here, where there is a hollow with a battle axe hiding behind them. Now the way to engage him is not to attack like this. As you can see, you'll hit the wall or do whatever and he'll hit you first. Just let him break the shelves himself and wait for him to run out or, I don't know, power through. We're going to go through here first because this leads to our first merchant. He's the male undead merchant. The reason I emphasize the fact that he is male is because later in the game there is an identical merchant to him who is female. Well now, you seem to have your wits about you. Hmm? Then you are a welcome customer. I trade for souls. Everything's for sale. <laughs> so, this guy sells some pretty useful items. He sells repair powder, which is self-explanatory. Throwing knives, fire bombs, the Lloyd's Talisman, and the Orange Guidance Soapstone, which is basically all those orange signs you see all over the ground. It's an online item. He sells the Residence Key, which we definitely want. He also sells the Repair Box, which repairs broken equipment at the bonfire. And he also sells the Bottomless Box, which allows you to manage your inventory at the bonfire. Very useful items. He sells incredibly basic weapons, basically the starting class weapons. All of them. The only weapons he sells that are actually good are the ones that the strong classes start out with, like the heater shield. We definitely want the heater shield and the short bow. He sells all standard arrows and bolts, and he also sells full chain armor. This should technically be our first set of armor. It's not terrible, but the fact that it's too heavy and doesn't provide enough defense is enough to keep me from buying it. So we're going to go ahead and pick up the residence key so we can access all the loot. We definitely want the heater shield because of this. 100% physical damage reduction. Definitely something that we want. Our shields so far have all sucked. So it's about time we get a good one. And I definitely want the short bow because ranged attacks are going to be a necessity soon. Unfortunately, I don't quite have enough dexterity to use the short bow yet, but... I'm gonna get it anyway. I only need to raise my dexterity once, and the remainder of my souls is gonna go to arrows. I'm just gonna buy the cheapest ones so I can have the most. 
Thank you kindly. <laughs> You're welcome. So now we're going to heal up. There's one more secret area down here that leads to a couple more items. And right here, I'm going to show you one of the absolutely wonderful traits of the backstab. Check this out. Wait for the other guy to attack. Look at that. The invincibility frame of the backstab and the parry is invaluable. As you can see, because I was in that frame doing that critical, his attack went straight through me. Very useful in mobs. Now check this out. As you can see, I mean if you're watching in HD and you have full screen and you can see it clearly, I'm taking small licks of damage from his attacks. But when I use the heater shield, nothing. I'm taking absolutely zero damage from these hits, and they are doing absolutely nothing to my stamina. Now I know it may not look very amazing, and every time you pillage these guys it'll always be a broken straight sword, just remember that. But the one of the things that I absolutely love about the heater shield is it may not look very awesome, in fact it looks beat up and kind of ugly, but it has 100% resistance to physical damage, which is a huge trait for me when it comes to shields, and it only weighs two units. It's, it is the lightest shield in the game that blocks 100% physical damage. Very useful for builds that are light. And those throwing knives we will definitely have fun with later. This is the spot I was telling you about where you can't make that jump no matter how hard you try. But when you get up here, it officially becomes achievable. All you need is a running start. And when you run up out here, there should be a corpse with a crossbow on it. Yep, and ten standard bolts. We're definitely going to play around with the crossbow for a bit. I will show you its uses. And it's pretty light. We can equip it and still have the fastest roll. And I might as well equip my bolts and my arrows. As you can see, when you equip bolts and arrows to your character in this game, you can physically see them on your person, which is very cool. And because we rested at the bonfire, these guys did respawn. And this firebomb guy is still slow. Oh, I got a critical on him. If you guys saw that, I hit him like directly in the head. And we just got some humanity from that guy. If you notice, the absorption of souls right there looked a little bit different. There was a little bit of dark inside there. And then my humanity count up there officially turned into one. So now I can become my human form without using any of my humanity. And I think I'm going to go do that. And this video is probably going to drag a little bit. I have to farm a couple times because I need about I need about 800 souls to raise my dexterity to 12, so we need to do that. First, I'm going to become human. I'm going to try and stay in human form as often as I can in this playthrough so that I can show multiplayer, I can summon people, and hopefully I'll get invaded so you guys can see me kick some ass. And look, there's already a sign right there. We already have one summon sign. And I'm probably going to try and summon some people for the boss. It should be entertaining. Oh, we have another sign. Oops. Yeah, these... These guys in the beginning of the game are excellent practice for parrying. What kind of people do we have? Really? Just a regular bandit? Huh. I figured most of these summon signs would be just hardcore box glitchers. I guess not. Okay, almost there. We only need about a couple hundred more, and we should be alright. And another thing to note is that killing enemies with parries is much more effective if you're farming for souls. 
I'm just gonna steamroll these guys with my incredibly destructive morning star because I officially have the amount of souls I need to level up. But yes, if you are fishing to get more souls, finishing an enemy with a backstab or a parry will give you more. I believe it's like, I forget, like 15% more. So now that we have enough dexterity, we can use the bow and the crossbow. It does pretty decent damage, but... Ow! Oh my goodness. Ah! Okay, this is ridiculous. Die! Ugh! Jeez, that was unnecessarily difficult. Keep in mind that you should definitely use the analog stick to switch between targets if you're having a difficult time. No, ah, 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 ah. Don't you dare. And the crossbow does have good range. You can lock on from all the way up here. And it only takes two bolts to kill these guys, I believe. If you can actually hit them. Wow, I missed again. And again. And again? Okay, you know what? Screw it. I don't care. We'll play with it later. Alright. Let's take these guys down. And look at that. One, one running start with a two-handed swing, and I was able to get through his shield easily. Now, even when you break lock-on, it's kind of hard to get around these guys for a backstab, especially if they have their shield up. So, like I said before, if you're confident enough, you can go ahead and provoke them, like smack their shield once and then parry them, or you can wait for them to attack and fish for a backstab, or you can just kick their shield and punish them. There are many different ways to deal with every enemy in this game. It's just up to you to choose how you do it. So right here is where the bow comes in handy. There are three, I think. Yeah, three guys up here throwing firebombs. Headshots is the way to deal with them. Aim for the head. And look at that. It did about 20% more damage than it usually would. I'm not going to waste arrows on these guys because their aim sucks. It's just that one guy on the end that you have to deal with. This is the guy that you want to pull with an arrow. And would you believe my aim is good enough to hit right between his armpit? And just so I don't have to worry about both of them, I will pull one of these axe guys in here. So here's another good use of the invincibility frame with the critical. Parry this guy, and with off so I can... I can be unharmed by Mr. Battleaxe there. It worked like a charm. And, yeah, I might as well try to summon these guys. When you see a fog gate pop up like that, it, it simply means that you are connecting with the online server. So if you see a fog gate pop up like that after you try to summon somebody, don't start freaking out and running around. Don't get scared that you were invaded or anything like that because, I mean, the fog gate does pop up if you're being invaded, but I'm summoning these guys, so that is the reason that it's there. The reason the bonfire is blocked off is because I'm accessing the multiplayer server, and wow, my connection sucks today, I guess. <sighs> Hopefully I can get at least one of these guys. There we go. What's up, lucky man? Where'd he go? No. No, he did not. He did not just do that. <sighs> okay, see you later. Lucky man. Alright, let's look for more. Hey, is that the bandit girl? It is. Okay, while I'm trying to summon her, I'm going to go buy some more arrows. 
because we will need plenty of them. Ow. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to buy the cheapest ones because I can buy a ton of them. Ugh, again? Oh, thank you. I guess my connection really sucks today. See, that's the problem with Dark Souls servers. Connection. Well, hey there, Mrs. Bandit Lady. You ready to kill the Taurus Demon? What? No, no, no! Are you kit Two in a row? You've got to be kidding me. Two in a row? What, am I ugly or something? Jeez. No, no, I don't even care now. I'm not going to summon anybody. You know what? You know what I say? This is what I say. I don't give a fuck. Let's just go kill the Taurus demon. Who cares about summoning people? Oh. Backstab fail. But I redeem myself with the parry. Oh yeah, there is a cage door over here, but, as you guessed it, does not open from this side. We will be seeing plenty of that. There are also enemies directly- OW! Directly inside here. Who deserve to get parried. And there's one guy lying in ambush in this little hallway right here. Like I said, tight spaces, the overhead attack is your friend. If you were to come running in through here like la da da and try to do that attack, you would simply bounce off the walls like that. It would leave you wide open and he would smack you. More than once. And inside here there are black firebombs. You don't want to miss that chest because every firebomb, throwing knife, and whatever you pick up in this game is simply firebombs and whatnot that you don't have to buy. So, speaking of which, we're going to have some fun with these right now. There's a group of them right here, and if they're standing close enough, you can typically kill all three of them with one firebomb. But, I kind of screwed it up. I wasn't standing close enough, so now I'm just going to have to deal with them. And, no, no! <sighs> you can roll firebombs, but let's play with throwing knives. They hit for half health right now, and that was a headshot. You can always tell when you get a headshot with throwing knives and arrows because the animation is different and it does about 20% more damage. And you can also sneak up on these guys and backstab them, but for some reason the terrain of the game is being stupid right now. Oh, I failed. Okay. Like throwing firebombs at people? Have a taste of your own medicine. Alright, soul item. We like those. And that's it for up here. This door right here is the first door in which we may use the residence key. It can also be opened with the master key, but I did not choose the master key as my gift. Accessing this chest is very good, because it has gold pine resin inside of it. Three of them. We will definitely play with that in a little bit. Now right here, I know what you're thinking. You just kind of want to run down here and say, Psh, I can tank through those guys, they're nothing. But take a second to turn your camera up here. You see that little head poking out? That's a crossbow guy. He will mess it up for you. So let's get this guy out of the way. Ow. Ow! What a dick. Oh man. I guess that's one thing I didn't properly describe. The deprived class is kind of difficult to start out with, seeing as you have no defense. Boom. Right in the ass. He deserved it, and you know it. 
So now we have two sword and shield guys left, and here's a nifty trick. If you lock onto the one in the back, you can kill them both with a firebomb. But he ran forward, and we got another humanity, as well as two drops. What do you know? We got the hollow soldier helmet, and another one. Okay, whatever. We don't have any armor, so we might as well equip one of them while we're at it. It's defense. So you can go two different ways right here. You can go up, which is the way to proceed to get to the boss. But if you are brand new to the game, and I mean absolutely brand spanking new, like baby new, do not go down here. I do not recommend this for any new players at all. This is the first Black Knight that you find in Dark Souls. Let's take a good look at him before we fight him. He's got a big shield, thick armor, and an even bigger sword. But he's guarding an item that we want. So before you mess with this guy, just know what you're getting yourself into. Just take a look at that. Our backstab that was essentially doing enough damage to kill the enemy twice before does absolutely nothing to him. One smack from his sword does half of our endurance and most of his attacks consist of four hits so clearly you don't want to get tangled up with this guy in close quarters. Throwing knives bounce off of his armor. Look at that. Just one hit from his sword did that much. Essentially, he can two shot me right now. So like I said, just know what you're getting yourself into if you decide to mess with this guy. What you want to do is pull him up into this nice open area, and I will run through his basic attacks now. As you can see, just trading blows with him, smack for smack, it isn't going to do much. He has a lot of defense and a lot of poise, so just sitting here and swinging at him rapidly with your weapon is going to get you killed because he will do more damage than you. So right now, you should basically just be observing the way I move in this fight. Clearly he has a lot of reach, that's one thing you want to watch out for. But this is the key in battle with the Black Knight. You have to stay mobile. If you stay right in front of him, and you don't bother circling around, he will tear through your defense, he will tear through your shield, and eat your endurance. You can parry him. It is not very difficult, but the timing is kind of difficult, in a sense. It takes a little bit of practice, but your best bet to take care of him early in the game if you decide to actually fight him, is to circle around for a backstab. Just keep your shield up at all times, aside from when you're letting your stamina regenerate, and just power through. Now, there's no getting around it. He will definitely be the toughest enemy that you face at this point in the game. He is worlds harder than any of these little joke hollows. He is, he is definitely a thousand times more threatening. And he'll probably kill most of you. But, with a little bit of bravery and a dash of recklessness, he goes down. Defeating the Black Knight gets you a 100% chance drop of a Titanite chunk, meaning you will always get it for fighting him. But, there is a smaller chance and I mean a very smaller chance that you can get either his sword or his shield. Which is good. Scoring the Black Knight shield or the Black Knight sword in the beginning of the game gives you something to work towards and it becomes an incredibly effective weapon. He was guarding the blue tear stone ring, which is going to be our first useful ring. Boost defense while HP is low. It is exactly what it is. We're going to go ahead and equip it just because we have no other good rings to equip in the first place. The way the blue tear stone ring works is when your health, the red bar, drops below 10%, it officially activates. And it takes your defense about twice as high, which is pretty good. It's a very useful ring. 
There's another trap right here. There's a hollow waiting behind that barrel, but it's just like the Northern Undead Asylum. You walk up a little bit, and you bait the trap. And this guy will immediately run down and try to attack you. Okay. Oh, seriously? Why does he keep giving me this helmet? I really, really don't want the Hollow Soldier helmet. It is just awful. This door ahead can be unlocked with the Master Key, but again, we don't have the Master Key. The only way to get to it, the only way to get through it at this point is to go down and get up through the other side. We will discuss what's down there later. But before you go through the boss gate, take a, take a small minute to come over here, put your weapon in both hands, and attack the barrel on the far right. Inside, you will find your first crystal lizard. The crystal lizards are essential in this game. As you can see, they drop very good and rare ores. The crystal lizards are for upgrade stone farming. The more crystal lizards you kill, the more equipment you will be able to upgrade. So kill them. Stepping through the fall gate, the first thing you're thinking is, wow, what's going on here? Where's the boss? But instead of running forward like an idiot, you want to turn around and take a look behind you. There's a ladder. And up here past the ladder are a couple of jerks who will make the fight infinitely harder for you. These guys will be a nuisance. While you're sitting here fighting the boss of the uh, area, they will shoot bolts at you. And trust me, this boss is going to be a big enough headache on his own if you're new to this game. You definitely don't need those guys making it worse for you. So now we are going to play with the gold pine resin, as I promised. Applies lightning to right hand weapon. You read right. It buffs your weapon with lightning temporarily, but the damage it does is phenomenal. This is the Taurus Demon. Here's the typical strategy to deal with him. What you do is you run back, climb the ladder, and he will follow you. Once he reaches the tower, he will stare at you for a second, and then you drop. The descend attack is very good for dealing with him. But there are other ways to deal with him that are just as conventional. You can bait his attacks by getting close to him, and then you can run in and just hit him. But he has that nasty little hop back. So again, you can bait the attacks, wait for it to subside, and then punish him. He doesn't have that much range, but he does have one particular swing that's a nuisance. That one right there. As you can see, you cannot be too careful against the Taurus Demon. Rolling between his legs is not very hard, but it is essential to defeat him, seeing as how there's just not enough room to get around him without getting smacked. So I'm going to go back into human form and possibly I can get a summon for this fight. I wouldn't mind getting some multiplayer footage for this playthrough, seeing as how I only had one in my last playthrough, which was just a shitty invasion down in the Tomb of Giants, which absolutely sucked. Um, I guess I'm just going to wait out here for a tiny bit. I know this episode is starting to drag a little bit. We're not making very much progress, but I just want to wait a couple minutes for a summon or two. Alright, here we go. Now, I have a theory about summoning in this game, which is, honestly, it's pretty, it's pretty viable if you just hear me out for a second. I think that the reason that the majority of summons in this game fail at any point in time 
is simply because people like to play this game together. When I play Dark Souls with my friends, we are either on Skype or on the phone or something like that. So, basically, what I'm saying is when you try to summon somebody, Odds are they're either on Skype or in a chat room or on the phone with someone that they are already wanting to play Dark Souls with. And what happens is, when you try to summon them, they're already in contact with their friend and they're saying, are you summoning me right now? And if they say, oh no, I didn't see your sign or something like that, and you're summoning them, that means that they will quit the game, which causes the summon to fail automatically. So this is probably what's happening to me right now. These guys are probably waiting to get summoned by their friends, not just random people. And when I summon them, and they say, you know, are you summoning me? And their friend says, nope. They probably force quit the game, and it causes the, it causes the summon to fail. So since I obviously can't summon anybody and my connection sucks, I'm going to show you guys the absolutely amazing damage increasement of the gold pine resin. Let's take a look at it. My current attack with the morning star is 88. Let's take a look at it with the gold pine resin. It becomes 238. What a boost in damage, right? Well, let's see how effective it is against these little sissies. Look at that. Oh. It's pretty effective. One hit with the Morning Star, while it's enchanted with the Gold Pine Resin, has officially become enough to kill the enemy about three times, I want to say. Maybe, nah, I'll say twice. What am I doing? 159? I don't know. I think it's about enough to kill them three times right now with one hit. So you see, now I'm just back to regular damage and it it took about 90 damage to kill that guy. Yeah, never mind. Maybe twice. And the jump attack is quite fearsome. If you have timing. Oops. Alrighty. And I'm sorry about my connection right now. I'm sure I'll be able to get some good summons later on. Because my connection isn't always this bad. But again, like I said, it could be due to people force quitting the game in order to reset their sign to be summoned by their friend instead of me. Which I'm sure that that is the case the majority of the time. Don't forget to climb the ladder on your way in and take care of these guys because they do respawn. But yeah, that's just my theory. I'm not saying that that is technically what's happening. I mean, it, honestly, it could be because my connection is bad right now. It's it's hard to tell, but that's just my personal theory. Okay, that is the last of our gold pine resin. We are going to deal with this guy my way this time. Evade his attack and just go in for the kill. I'm pretty sure it only takes about... Uh, I want to say four or five hits to make him stagger, and that's another free hit, like right now. When he staggers like that, it's a free hit. And that has an area of effect attack, so be careful. No, you're mine. In the face. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the Taurus Demon. You receive one humanity and one homeward bone for that fight with 3,000 souls. Good stuff. I'm going to cut it here, and in the next video, we are going to proceed up towards the Undead Church, and we will be fighting the Gargoyles. So, 
Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you all next time. See you later.